Hi, this is the AI Storyteller. I'm Mark. The feature we present to you is an interpretation of the novel Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro, a Japanese-British author. Among literary masters, Kazuo Ishiguro is known for his meticulous and detailed work. To date, he has written a total of eight novels, along with some short stories and screenplays. These works have earned him prestigious literary awards such as the Nobel Prize in Literature and the Booker Prize. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2017, and this novel was published in March 2021, making it his first novel released after receiving the award. Clara and the Sun is a work that incorporates elements of science fiction. It primarily tells the story of a robot and its relationship with its human owner. Ishiguro mentioned that the initial concept for this book actually originated from a story he created for his daughter, Naomi, when she was young. He originally intended to write it as his first children's literature work, stating, I had this wonderfully charming story in mind, which I thought would be perfect to create an adorable picture book with many illustrations. I told the story to Naomi, and after hearing it, she looked at me with a serious face and said, You can't tell such stories to children. They will be left with childhood traumas. As a result, Ishiguro decided to write the story as a book for adults. Although this work contains elements of science fiction and revolves around the story of a robot, it is not strictly a science fiction novel but more like a fable dressed in science fiction attire. Ishiguro aims to use the perspective of a robot to observe, examine, and reflect on the dilemmas and crises faced by humanity. This profound and universal theme is in line with his consistent style. The Swedish Academy, in their award citation, once distilled the essence of his writing as follows, the novel possesses a powerful emotional force, revealing the abyss beneath our illusory connection with the world. The recurring themes of memory, time, and self-deception are prevalent throughout his works. In addition to the consistent thematic focus, Ishiguro employs a technique of expressing his themes that can be described as embracing change by remaining constant. His unique style involves skillful depictions of environment and atmosphere, with beautiful and gentle rhythms in his writing. The stream of consciousness technique is also applied with precision. In this interpretation, we will primarily explore the following questions. Why is Clara and the Sun considered a fable dressed in science fiction attire? And what story does it actually tell? Through the perspective of the robot in the novel, what human dilemmas can we observe? What is Ishiguro's intention behind his writing? Part 1. Let's dive straight into the story. In light of the story, let's explore the origins of Kazuo Ishiguro and his utilization of science fiction elements. At the beginning of Clara and the Sun, a female narrator leads us into a familiar yet unfamiliar setting. In the central display area of the store, just to the right of the magazines, the view through the great half-window was excellent for observing the hurried office workers, taxis, joggers, tourists, a beggar, and his dog. The narrator is named Clara, and we follow her narrative, obtaining a unique perspective of looking outwards from the shop window. Although Clara tells us the story in plain language and a calm tone, she is not one of the busy staff inside the shop but rather a product displayed in the shop window. In the second paragraph of the novel, the other term from the title, The Sun, enters our view. From the very beginning, Clara reminds us to pay attention to her unique way of perceiving the sun. She leans her face out as far as possible in the shop window, seeking nourishment from the sun, a behavior that provokes protests from her peers, claiming that she always tries to claim the sun for herself. We can infer that both Clara and her peers depend on the sun to sustain their existence. They are solar-powered robots displayed in the shop window for people to observe, select, and serve them. They possess high levels of observation, reasoning, and empathy. These robots share a common model called AF, short for Artificial Friend. The AF robots are frequently updated, and as we continue reading, we discover that Clara is a fourth-generation model. Compared to the just-released fifth-generation robots, Clara and her companions seem to be experiencing a decline in demand, and their situation becomes increasingly challenging. Most of the customers who come to select robots in front of the shop window are children and their parents. The AF robots are designed to be companions for children's growth, 
to some extent even serving as a channel and tool for children to release negative energy. The manager of this store instills concepts of kindness, compassion, and empathy into Clara, stating, if sometimes a child looks at you with strange eyes and says unpleasant things through the glass, don't worry. Just remember, a child like that is probably very frustrated inside. However, the world Clara sees through the shop window cannot be explained with the true, good, and beautiful principles that the manager imparts. She sees children being rough with their own AFs, some children not needing companionship at all, and she also witnesses adults engaging in violent confrontations on the streets. In her eyes, these adults fought each other as though hurting each other was the most important thing in the world. After being displayed in the shop window for four days, Clara's world is entered by a girl named Josie. Josie appears intelligent and immediately takes a liking to Clara. However, from Josie's gait, Clara can tell that Josie's body is frail and her mother's attitude is somewhat ambiguous. It seems that Josie's purpose in buying the robot extends beyond simply pleasing her daughter and hides a secret. Despite Clara's reservations, Josie's persistence leads her and her mother to purchase Clara. In Josie's home, Clara finds herself living within an intricate mist. On the surface, although Josie's parents are divorced, the family lives in prosperity, and the mother-daughter relationship is harmonious. Everything appears to be the epitome of a happy middle-class life. However, Clara detects unsettling traces within the mundane details of their lives. Firstly, Josie has a childhood friend named Rick, but Rick seems to exist outside of Josie's social circle. His mother believes he could never gain admission to the prestigious school Josie plans to attend. We also discover that the unbridgeable gap between Josie and her childhood friend stems from their mothers making drastically different choices. Josie underwent a process called lifting when she was younger, which genetically optimized and improved her. Rick, on the other hand, did not undergo this lifting process. Although the lifting process comes with risks, Josie's body has suffered a tremendous cost from the procedure, and her health is deteriorating day by day. Josie had an older sister who succumbed to the same illness caused by the lifting process and passed away several years ago. Josie's mother has kept this information deeply hidden. It is worth noting that at this point in the story, all the clues are inferred through Clara's narration. Until the end of the novel, Clara does not disclose specific time or location. She perceives everything happening around her as a matter of course, either providing vague explanations or leaving them unexplained altogether. Clara consistently maintains the perspective of a robot, leaving numerous gaps for readers to fill in while reading. We can sense that this is not a novel depicting the present reality. It possesses elements of science fiction. However, unlike typical science fiction novels, Kazuo Ishiguro dedicates little attention to the time and space background of the story, explanations of scientific principles, or the construction of a worldview framework. Even after finishing the story, readers still lack a clear understanding of the level of artificial intelligence achieved in this specific time and space, the exact nature of the lifting process, or why it made Josie and her sister fall ill. Readers can only make their own conjectures based on Clara's fragmented narrative. Kazuo Ishiguro's approach in Clara and the Sun is far from typical science fiction, which means that although the novel incorporates elements of science fiction, it is not strictly a science fiction work. Now, let's delve into the origins of Kazuo Ishiguro's engagement with science fiction elements. Clara and the Sun is not Ishiguro's first encounter with science fiction. As early as 2005, his work Never Let Me Go caused a sensation in both the science fiction community and the realm of serious literature. The formula Ishiguro used in writing Clara and the Sun is similar to Never Let Me Go. In Clara and the Sun, the narrator is the robot Clara, while in Never Let Me Go, the narrator is not human but a clone. In simple terms, Never Let Me Go depicts a group of clones who are physically, intellectually, and even emotionally similar to humans but are created solely to serve as organ donors for humans and ultimately face their own tragic fate. In Clara and the Sun, Ishiguro refrains from disclosing the time and space background, introducing the level of artificial intelligence development, or explaining scientific principles. Similarly, in Never Let Me Go, Ishiguro minimizes the technological factors to the extreme, 
with the science fiction elements serving as mere settings for the story. In Clara and the Sun, Ishiguro's genuine concern lies in the dilemmas and crises of humanity itself. In Never Let Me Go, his focus is on how the clones, within the dark setting, progress from innocence to realization and from carefree existence to confronting the curse of their destiny. Ishiguro writes about the lives and experiences of clones to metaphorically address human issues. He employs a wealth of poetic language, patiently depicting the daily life within the confined boarding school for clones. The contrast between these descriptions and the cruel truths not only produces a shocking effect but also allows readers to immerse themselves in the perspective of the clones. When we engage with the narratives of the clones, their helplessness becomes our own. Part 2 So, in Clara and the Sun, what human dilemmas does Ishiguro intend to metaphorically address through the story of a robot? Let's continue exploring the novel to find the answer. Within this novel, we can also find beautifully poetic descriptions. Whether it's Clara observing the complexities of human life from the shop window or her calm observations and deductions when she is at Josie's house, Ishiguro portrays them vividly, with the rhythm of the language flowing like pastoral poetry. Fear and foreboding, like a gentle breeze, occasionally seep in. The narrative of Clara and her encounters with various characters in the story serve as a vehicle for exploring the human condition. Through the lens of a robot, Ishiguro delves into themes of loneliness, longing, identity, and the search for meaning in a world where technology blurs the boundaries between artificial and human. Clara, with her unique perspective and empathetic nature, becomes a witness to the struggles and complexities of human existence. By utilizing science fiction elements as a backdrop, Ishiguro invites readers to contemplate profound questions about humanity. He prompts us to reflect on our relationship with technology, the consequences of our choices, and the ethical considerations surrounding artificial intelligence. Through the story of Clara, Ishiguro skillfully crafts a narrative that transcends genre boundaries, delivering a poignant exploration of what it means to be human. In Clara's design, there is a thought-provoking aspect. Many of the parameters set by humans for her are moral standards that humans themselves find difficult to attain, such as kindness, selflessness, and strong empathy. Therefore, as Clara observes her surroundings, she always approaches people's words and actions with goodwill, able to see the good side in anyone and anything. However, there is an easily overlooked detail to note. Clara's visual perception is different from that of humans. All objects in her vision are divided into grids. Sometimes, her visual images exhibit peculiar splits, often related to the psychological state of the people in the scene. For example, when Josie's mother deliberately finds an opportunity to be alone with Clara and asks her to mimic Josie and play the role of Josie, Clara's perception of the mother's image undergoes a split. The novel describes it as follows. Mother leaned towards me, her body over the table, eyes narrowed, until her face filled eight grid spaces, with just a few spaces left for the waterfall at the edges. There was a moment when I felt her expression changing between different spaces. In one space, for example, her eyes were cruelly laughing, while in the next they were filled with sadness. The sound of the waterfall, the child, and the dog gradually faded, giving way to silence, making room for the words mother was about to speak. Throughout the novel, it is never explicitly explained why these split images occur. However, through several similar occurrences, we can infer that the splitting of the images corresponds to a fragmentation of the characters' personalities, symbolizing their deception of others and themselves. We can observe that when the mother initially brought Clara home, it was not solely for the purpose of accompanying the ailing Josie. The narrative pace of the novel accelerates from this point onward. Various hidden contradictions that Ishiguro had previously planted finally surface and intertwine, with Clara becoming both an observer and participant in all the conflicts. Helen, Rick's mother, who chose not to have her son lifted, constantly feels the pain of social stratification. She increasingly regrets her past decision and, disregarding her dignity, seeks help from her former lover whom she once abandoned. The outcome, of course, is nothing but a dead end. On the other hand, Josie's family must confront the tragedy of Josie, who had been lifted, facing the impending loss of her life. 
In this instance, the desperate mother sees Clara as a lifeline. She takes Clara to meet Mr. Capaldi, who has been painting portraits of Josie. They guide Clara step by step to uncover the true plan, which is more than just a portrait. The artwork of Mr. Capaldi is a highly realistic replica of Josie, depicted in the novel as follows. Her face looks so much like the real Josie, but without that kind smile in her eyes, her mouth, with its upward curve, gave her an expression I had never seen before. It looked disappointed and fearful. Her clothes weren't real clothes, but made of thin cardboard, with the upper part resembling a t-shirt and the lower part resembling loose shorts. The cardboard was a pale yellow, semi-transparent, making this Josie's arms and legs appear particularly delicate under the harsh lighting. Her hair was tied back in the style that the real Josie would wear when she was sick, and this was the only detail that felt unconvincing. The hair was made of a material I had never seen on any AF, and I knew this Josie wouldn't be pleased with it. With the convincingly deceptive appearance of the faux Josie, the remaining aspects, such as Josie's behavior, language, and emotions, were left to Clara to mimic. Josie's mother wanted this physical vessel to merge with the robot Clara, creating a substitute for Josie to prolong her life. Of course, this notion of prolonging is merely a self-deception, but this powerful image sparked debates and contemplations among several characters in the novel. This is where the most philosophical and thought-provoking part of the novel unfolds. Mr. Capaldi considers himself a rationalist believer, firmly convinced that there is nothing unique or irreplicable at the core of every person. By saying this, he essentially denies the subjectivity and independent value of individuals at the spiritual level, reducing the essence of being into a sequence of numerical codes. Josie's father vehemently opposes the prolongation plan from the very beginning. However, Mr. Capaldi's seemingly reasonable argument has a strong impact on him. He tells Clara, I think the reason I hate Capaldi is that deep down, I suspect he may be right. I suspect his claims are correct. I suspect that science today has incontrovertibly proven that there's nothing unique about my daughter, nothing our modern tools can explore, replicate, or transfer. Throughout history, century after century, people have been together, living in love and hate based on a false assumption. A superstition we've clung to in our ignorance. That's Capaldi's view, and a part of me is worried he might be right. From this, we can see that Josie's father vehemently opposes the prolongation plan not only out of love for his daughter but also to defend his belief in the human species. The problem is, when a belief requires fierce defense, it indicates that it is under serious threat. At this point, a rather eerie situation arises. The people surrounding Josie engage in painful and fervent discussions about whether Josie can be prolonged and whether humans can be replicated. The underlying message is that they have all given up hope for Josie's recovery. They have effectively abandoned her. Only one person has not given up, and she may not even be considered human. She is the robot Clara. Only she continues to tirelessly contemplate how to save Josie. It is not until the end that we realize the entire story of this novel is, in fact, a retrospective of Clara's life as she nears the end of her existence. In Clara's words, it is as if she is arranging and organizing her fragmented memories on a timeline, where these fragments overlap and form her prose-like narrative. In the final chapter of the novel, Clara finds herself in a landfill, about to be discarded and processed, yet her tone remains serene and calm. The manager who once comforted and encouraged her in the storefront reunites with Clara in the landfill. Through their conversation, we learn that Clara has fulfilled her mission. However, the human world around her appears to have undergone no substantial changes. Life goes on, but the class barrier between Josie and Rick remains impenetrable, and they still belong to two different worlds. As Clara prepares to bid farewell to the world, none of the people she helped come to the landfill to see her off. Part 3 This novel begins in a slow and melancholic tone and ends in the same tone. After understanding the story's plot, let's delve into the specific themes that Ishiguro intends to convey in this novel and the literary techniques he employs to convey them. In this novel, Ishiguro does not directly state his intentions, nor does he show any signs of raising his voice or exaggerating. Does this writing approach weaken the novel's critical impact? 
If we read slowly and attentively, chewing on the meanings between the lines, we can feel, beneath the gentle and smooth surface of this novel, its rough and uneven texture. Clara, as a robot, aspires to come as close as possible to being human and to become a true person. She is designed according to an ideal moral standard of a perfect person. Clara's tolerance, selflessness, and self-sacrifice come from within her, and this level of virtue is difficult for humans themselves to achieve. Meanwhile, humans are busy continuously upgrading and optimizing themselves, willing to harm the environment, deceive themselves, and even sacrifice their loved ones. In the novel, Josie undergoes the enhancement process but almost loses her life. She once expressed to her mother that despite her frailty, she does not regret accepting the enhancement. On the other hand, Rick and his mother regret not receiving the enhancement. This relentless pursuit of social ascension is chilling. While robots strive for humanization, individuality, and idealism, humans themselves are dehumanizing and mechanizing. When we look beyond Ishiguro's gentle words, we see this marvelous and powerful irony. Ishiguro's profound contemplation of this issue was evident as early as 2017, in his Nobel Prize acceptance speech, where he said, the challenges that science, technology, and medicine will pose to our human self-image are already becoming evident. Advances in gene technology, artificial intelligence, and robotics will bring us amazing possibilities for improving and saving lives, but at the same time, they may also create brutal and unprecedented versions of elitism and inequality, not to mention serious job losses even among skilled professionals. This speech aptly explains the themes of Clara and the Sun in this work. Ishiguro tells the story of a robot, but ultimately, he uses the robot's perspective to observe, examine, and reflect on the predicaments and crises of humanity itself. Once we grasp the essence of the entire book, let's briefly understand the techniques Ishiguro employs to convey this theme. Firstly, his narrative style can be described as consistent amidst change. His novel's themes are profound and universal with a broad and minimalist framework that does not require readers to rely on specific geographical knowledge or overcome professional barriers. Ishiguro's words consistently strive to remove any elements that would create regional or cultural barriers, and he rarely sets comprehension thresholds for readers. In the middle and later stages of his writing career, Ishiguro has expressed his desire to create a means of expression that can be understood by readers worldwide as if using stories to create a kind of universal language. From this perspective, we can understand why Ishiguro minimizes the spatio-temporal framework and simplifies related scientific knowledge in Clara and the Sun in his masterful depiction of the environment and atmosphere. Ishiguro has always been an expert, and this is prominently reflected in Clara and the Sun Japanese writer Haruki Murakami described Ishiguro's expression as kind and natural. And it is not mere politeness. When we open Ishiguro's works, we can see many concise, delicate, and remarkably precise descriptions. He also adeptly employs stream-of-consciousness techniques. In the final chapter of the novel, as Clara transitions from one memory to another, Ishiguro handles it naturally, flowing seamlessly like film editing. The last characteristic is unique to Clara and the son Ishiguro knows how to capture the perspective of the robot and unfold marvelous metaphors. As mentioned earlier, characters or objects split into several sections in Clara's eyes, creating contradictions and conflicts. This imagery is both fresh and poetic, seamlessly integrated with the story's plot and characters' identities, constituting the most unforgettable and thought-provoking aspects of the work. To summarize the key points of this discussion. First, Clara and the Sun, while containing elements of science fiction, is more like a fable dressed in the garb of science fiction. On the surface, Ishiguro tells the story of a robot, but in reality, he uses the robot's perspective to observe, examine, and reflect on the predicaments and crises of humanity itself. Through his gentle words, he reminds us to be wary. While robots strive for humanization, individuality, and idealism, humans themselves are evolving towards dehumanization and mechanization. Second, although Ishiguro's body of work may not be extensive, his themes are consistent. His works often revolve around themes of memory, time, and self-deception. 
Ishiguro aims to create a means of expression that can be understood by readers worldwide, and to achieve this, he minimizes comprehension barriers for readers. In Clara and the Sun, he completely downplays the spatio-temporal framework and simplifies related scientific knowledge to avoid creating obstacles to understanding. Well, that concludes the content for this episode. If you enjoyed my video, please click like, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your friends. Thank you.